Did you know that the reason Egyptian hieroglyphics could be deciphered is all because of the Rosetta Stone? Stick around to learn all about it. Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about the Rosetta Stone. What is it and why is it so important? Don't forget, the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button and the little bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. First things first, what is the Rosetta Stone? The Rosetta Stone is a big slab of pink and grey granite diorite. It is inscribed with three different scripts, hieroglyphic, demotic and Greek. But the stele is damaged, and so the text on the top corners and the bottom right hand corner are missing. The text dates to the year 196 BCE, and we know this because the text is actually a very run of the mill document, and each script outlines what King Ptolemy V Epiphanes had achieved in the year since his coronation. These achievements included reducing or even eliminating taxes, some enemies of the state being released, squashing Egypt's enemies, and investing large sums of money in building temples. According to the inscription, identical copies of this decree were to be placed in every large temple in Egypt, but whether that was actually done is unknown. Where was the Rosetta Stone found, you may ask? And well, the answer is in the name. In 1799, Napoleon and his troops were in Egypt, and Lieutenant Pierre Francois Xavier Bouchard, who was a French officer of engineers, discovered the stone and removed it from a section of an old wall of a building which was being demolished as part of the construction work on Fort Julien. The building which the stone was found in was in the Egyptian port city of Rashid, which is also known as Rosetta. Hence the Rosetta Stone. In 1801, the British took Cairo from the French, and at this time, under what is known as Article 16 of the Capitulation of Alexandria, the French had to give up curiosities, natural or artificial, that they had collected in Egypt to the English. Then in 1802, the British King George III donated it to the British Museum, where it has been ever since. So, why is this particular old stone more important than many of the other old stones which have survived from antiquity? Well, it was due to the multiple scripts, namely Greek and Demotic, on the Rosetta Stone that we were able to decipher and translate Egyptian hieroglyphics, which then opened up the possibility to translate the numerous hieroglyphic texts throughout Egypt. The beginning of the decipherment began with the Englishman, Thomas Young, who worked out the direction in which the hieroglyphics were meant to be read and identified some of the hieroglyphics which related to Ptolemy V Epiphanes. It was then in the early 1820s that the script was fully deciphered by the French linguist and scholar Jean-Francois Champollion. Scholars since then have debated whether Young or Champollion deserves the greater credit for deciphering hieroglyphics but this argument often falls along nationalistic lines. Both men contributed to the final result in opening up the ancient Egyptian civilization to the modern world, but it is clear it was Champollion who finally broke the code of Egyptian hieroglyphics after Young had done the early work on the stone. Prior to Champollion's breakthrough, Hieroglyphics were believed to be decorations, not a language, because no one in Europe, where the majority of Egyptian artifacts were being shipped, had any experience of a written language like this. The Rosetta Stone was discovered and translated before excavations in Mesopotamia brought cuneiform to light to be translated, and so Champollion's achievement in recognising the hieroglyphic images as a language is all the more impressive. At the time when he broke the code of ancient Egyptian language, most people still believed the biblical history claiming the world was only around 4,000 years old. Champollion understood that the hieroglyphics clearly indicated a history predating the Bible, but was at first afraid to contradict God's word. Fortunately, 
His dedication to empirical, intellectual truth overpowered superstition, and he published his work in around 1821 to 1822. If he hadn't, our knowledge of ancient Egypt and the surrounding regions would be nowhere near what it is today. Do you know of another discovery like the Rosetta Stone in your own culture? And do you think it was Young or Champollion who deserves the most credit? Let us know what you think down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organisation, so if you'd like to support our work, you can head to our Patreon via the pop-up in the top corner of the screen, or you can follow our Patreon link down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon with another video.